All right, what's good YouTube? Today I wanted to go into kind of a deep analysis on what we're seeing in the competitive meta going into major one, just based on what we're seeing in scrims. We're gonna be talking about weapons, we're gonna be talking about the maps, we're gonna be talking about you know the possible GAs and what we're working with right now. So once those matches start at the beginning of December, you can have a kind of a head start on what you can expect to see in these pro gameplays. So let's start out with the weapons. So I'm assuming you guys have probably watched some apes or have played some apes yourself before, so if you're watching those BPL Pro 8, you know that the main weapons that are being used by the pro players are the MCW and the Rival 9. These maps in MW3 are actually really more catered towards these AR players, just like they were back in 2009 when they were originally released uh, in MW2. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more MCWs than Rival 9s, but those are the two main weapons that you'll be seeing. If we wanna break it down by map, you'll see, let's say on Invasion, most of the time you're gonna be seeing everyone running ARs except for maybe you know one or two hills. You know That first P1, you're definitely gonna be seeing two subs, but for the most part, a lot of those players are gonna be running those MCWs. Uh, we'll move on to Skid Row. Skid Row's a really mainly SMG map, but you do get those times where you see a lot of ARs, especially on those P5s and P2s were really big open areas. You're probably only seeing one sub, if that, when you're trying to break or hold these hills. So really expect those ARs on the open hills, but anything, you know, close quarters, back alley, that barbershop hill, P1, you're gonna be seeing most likely two SMGs like normal. We'll move on to sub base. Sub base, another one, super AR heavy map. You might be seeing one or two here or there, but for the most part, people are running those ARs even on sub base as well. You know, P2s, you'll probably be seeing two SMGs on, but for the most part, you're gonna be seeing those SMGs be really flexible and starting to switch weapons on the fly as they go on through the map. So it's really just based on whatever they spawn, whatever their team needs at that certain moment, and you know, whatever specific position they're holding at that moment, uh, they're just gonna be basically making that judgment as they spawn on and switching to whatever they need. We'll move on to Karachi. Karachi, I think, is probably the only map that you'll see the common, you know, two sub, two ARs for each team throughout the entirety of the map. Uh, obviously, there are still switches that will go on just like there were in previous years, but for the most part, you know, Karachi seems like the most basic one where you do see those two SMGs throughout the entire map. And then lastly, we'll go on to Terminal. Terminal is basically just all ARs, you know. Once again, you maybe see one hill that teams will run a sub, maybe, you know, in that plane hill but for the most part you're gonna be seeing a bunch of MCWs on terminal it's just how that map plays out a lot of long sight lines similar to invasion you're just gonna be having a lot of long distance fights uh, and honestly this is just the beginning of the game but we'll probably see more and more SMGs being played as teams get more comfortable in different situations that's what it seems to be like you know at the beginning of scrims a lot of teams were just running strictly MCWs but as they got more comfortable and how they wanted to break hills how they wanted to hold hills uh, you can see the situation that the rival would actually be more beneficial and teams have started to adapt to that. So if we want to talk about the roles, you know, technically that quote unquote, you know, flex player is basically just that second sub that is switching from the SMG to the AR. Or if you want to even say both SMGs because both of them will be switching to ARs, you'll never see, except for maybe Karachi Hardpoint, uh, a player running a sub basically the entire map. It's just detrimental to the squad and you just won't see pro players doing it, at least in stage one. Uh, we'll see how the game develops and how whether spawns develop and change everything or whether we bring in a smoke or other things that might change the dynamic of the game but for right now these are just how the maps are played it's not really whether the mcw it's better it's just basically how the maps are designed so the flex player in the past was usually, you know, that second AR that wasn't, you know, that quote unquote main AR and they would switch from the AR to the sub. But honestly, in this game, you're always going to have two designated ARs no matter what. You will not be seeing those two ARs switch to an SMG pretty much at all in these respawns. It's just, you know, not really applicable to the maps itself. Uh, so basically those flex players nowadays are just those subs switching to the MCW. So I kind of want to talk about just the maps in general for Hardpoint and then we'll talk about control for these maps in hardpoint you know a lot of them are just okay it really comes down to a lot of this the hill placements specifically on like sub base invasion terminal you just have weird rotations where let's say for terminal you have a burger town hill and you have four of the five hard points with an advantageous one side where you just want those dream spawns it's just really not the best way to actually have the flow of the map because you're basically just playing for one side and that side is so powerful and you can really just chain hills from 
that side. We're talking about Karachi. Karachi plays pretty standard, but just this one side of the map that just has no hills on it. So it's basically just used for routes and spawns. Uh, so that's the one big criticism for that. Honestly, in my opinion, Karachi has been one of the more fun maps to watch. Uh, if we're gonna go to sub base, once again, you know, just weird rotation. You know, P2 to P3 is just a really weird chain of hills where you're just taking two steps to get over to that next hill. So there really is no real rotation to it. And a lot of the hills are just super contest heavy. What you'll see on sub base is sometimes if you've watched some of these scrims, they won't even get to 250 points because they're so contest heavy. You know, you can technically say all of those five hard points are contest hills and you know, you could technically make them money hills, but just most of the time, especially, you know, P1 to P4, they're just really big contest ones. And as long as you're just, you know, maintaining, you know, those trades, it's really going to be a lot of white time on those hills. P5 is, could be a money hill, but it's really just those other four that set the tone for the map. And you really just get these maps where you don't get the 250, but I think we'll gradually fall into those games where we're getting those 250s as teams start to realize how to play it mo most efficiently. But you will see, you know, it's starting to gain traction towards that way. So, you know, give it a few more weeks. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more 250s and games not ending just on time. We'll move on to Skid Row. Skid Row is a pretty decent map, I think, in Hardpoint right now. It's mainly just those two outside hills where it's super rotational based. Like P2 is just super rotate heavy. If you rotate at 60 once P1 pops, you're pretty much just guaranteeing that next hill for that full 60 because it's so easy to hold. So if you can just at least make that P1 just a little bit mixy, it is worth the trade-off in some sense. Uh, so that's the only really big uh, issue for that map right now, just because of how hard it is to break that P2. But honestly, I do like the flow of that map right now. And lastly, we will go on to Invasion. Invasion, once again, really weird hill placement with the Treehouse Hill and then the Palace Hill. Palace Hill, as you guys know, really, really hard to break. But honestly, it has been getting more and more traction of possible breaks in scrims. Teams are finally realizing how to play it the most efficient way. But it is honestly just still a hard hill to break. So uh, there are rumors that it's going to be changed. We don't know for sure if that rotation is going to be changed, but honestly, that P4 to P5 is a super killer. And you see a lot of times teams just rotating basically once P4 pops or even while P3 is still up to try and get those palace spawns so that they can actually hold that full 60 because it's basically a guaranteed full 60 unless you start scamming. So those are how those hardpoint maps are starting to get played. Uh, we'll see how the meta shifts when matches actually start. I'm expecting those really easy holdable hills to just be exasperated in these matches just because teams are less likely to scam when something is on the line and matches are actually underway. So we'll see how that plays out and we'll start getting the data from that. For the control maps, I think Invasion and Karachi have some really good potential, but there are some, you know, really questionable spawns on the offensive side for both of those maps. So we'll see if we can get those tuned, but honestly, if those things can get fixed. I really like those two maps for control specifically. And then high rise to me is a little bit iffy. I just think it's a little bit too defensive sided because of how the spawn kills work, where if you just get one, three or four down, you can kind of just ride that momentum on defense, get set up in these positions that are just super powerful and start spawn killing those enemies as they're trying to come out of those windows. So I think it's a little bit iffy as a map for control, but those other two I think do have potential to be some decent control maps. And then we'll talk about GAs, you know, that's been the hot topic of the competitive scene in the past week or so. So right now we're playing with no smoke grenade, no DDoS and two trophies. It's really interesting to see what teams are going to be able to do in terms of trying to break these really hard hills. You really have to coordinate your tacticals to try and break those trophies on in and then break onto the hill because you don't have a smoke to cover lines of sight. And because you have no DDoS to actually destroy those trophies, you really just have to use that teamwork to start challenging things together and use those tack tools to good use so honestly it creates a different meta in my opinion we probably should be playing with either one smoke or one trophy or one DDoS. One of those things at least I think should be tried out just because I think it'll play a little bit better, especially on Invasion and Terminal where you have some of those hills that are super hard to break, but also a lot of long, long sight lines where you're just holding those lanes with those ARs. So it'll be really interesting what we could do. I think one trophy would be a really interesting thing to try out. I think Aix and Octane were both talking about it in this past week. And I think it would be an interesting idea to test uh, to try and get some of those breaks on in into some of these hills. You know, with time, I think
think teams are going to start to realize, you know, the optimal ways to break. They always do. But I do think some of these hills are just super questionable. So if we're going to do something about it, I think, you know, one trophy or one smoke would be uh, the beneficial way to go about it. And, you know, especially just on Invasion and Terminal, those are just the two maps with those really long sight lines, really long distances with some of those unbreakable hills. But that does it for this pre-major one, you know, competitive meta update. I'm going to try and keep doing some type of competitive meta update based on scrims just with you guys, just to give you guys a little update on what is going on in pro play as matches aren't going on and scrims aren't being streamed. So you can get an expectation of what you're going to see going into major one. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.